Now, with Crossmix OS, the TrimUI Smart Pro has reached new heights, giving performance, especially on PSP, that is genuinely surprising to me. I'm really surprised with how good the TrimUI Smart Pro is now. This is a sub $60 handheld, and in this video, I'm going to be showing just what you can do with Crossmix OS, giving a general overview of this custom version of the stock firmware, and especially showcasing how good PSP performance is on here, because it's really, really good. So anyway, let's first get into how to get crossmix on your TrimUI Smart Pro. So first you're going to need a micro SD card. I suppose if you wanted to, you could use your stock card, but I don't really recommend that because often they're not the best quality. So here I'm using a second SanDisk micro SD card. You're going to need to use a program like Rufus to format your micro SD card to FAT32 or large FAT32. And then go down to the link in the description, scroll down to the bottom of the page to download Crossmix here. And with that, you're going to get a zip file, drag that to the root of your micro SD card and extract it there. If it asks you to replace any file, like the auto run files you can just click yes to all and then afterwards you can delete your zip file and now you have crossmix so it's up to you now to bring your ROMs over and your BIOS files you can either bring over your own or bring over the ones that came with your stock micro SD card on your trim UI smart pro and once you're done with everything you can eject your micro SD card and put it into your trim UI smart pro and the first time you power it on it'll take a minute to get set up but now once that's done we're in crossmix and we're good to go so like I mentioned earlier this is just an upgraded version of the stock OS. So you can see it looks very similar and in most cases identical to the stock OS. I'm not going to give a full overview of everything in Crossmix, but some of the most important changes are over here in the app section. The ones I find most important first are the function key settings. So that's just going to give you some settings. I'm going to talk about this more in a second, but mainly for performance mode is what I'd recommend changing it to, but you can actually change it to adjust LEDs or other kind of controls. And you can toggle that of course on the switch on the bottom of your handheld. Now we have moonlight. So if you want to do some moonlight streaming on here you can do it I haven't gotten the chance to test that out yet but I've seen others doing it and it does appear to work we have OTA update which is over-the-air update and that's a really nice feature so many handhelds don't have that and I really wish they did so when Crossmix gets updated you're not gonna have to go through any huge process like other OS's might want you to do even doing things like getting an image file flashing it to a formatted cart all this no it's just as simple as opening this up and it should update for you and then there's port master so you do have a nice 16 to 9 screen here for port master so you're going to be able to play certain ported PC games here natively on your handheld, which is really, really nice. I have had some compatibility issues here, I assume, with certain games crashing, not wanting to open. Some have worked. You can actually download them right here through the app using Wi-Fi again, so that's really nice. And then we have system tools. So within system tools, you have a lot of different things you can do. You can change your overlays because, of course, many of the systems you're going to be emulating are not going to be 16 to 9, so you can choose black bars or to have overlays on the side. You can change the LEDs that are behind the sticks up if you want. You can change your theme. So if you don't want it to look as much like stock, you can do that here. And then there's many different network options like sync thing. You also have the ability to be able to connect your handheld to your PC, bring games over directly from your PC to your handheld, no cable required, no micro SD card reader required. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do in there if you want. And it also comes with a scrape wrap. You don't need to log in or anything. You just select a console and it scrapes the box art for you. And yeah, it seems to work from what I tested. So now let's go over to some emulation. Like I mentioned earlier, a big change that I want to highlight here is with the PSP. So I was really impressed with PSP performance on the stock OS, the 1.0.4, but here it's now even better. So hovering over a game, you can press X and it'll give you a list of emulators you can use. The majority of the time in this video, I'm going to be using the Vulkan performance emulator, which I find to be the best, but sometimes it can cause some graphics issues. So I believe in the GTA footage I'm using here, I'm going to be using the OpenGL performance emulator. And from what I understand, anytime you want to launch a game through a specific emulator, you do have to press X. I don't think there's a way to set one of these as a default emulator. I could be wrong, but I haven't seen it so far. And I have to say, even before any settings tweaks, which I'm going to show you in a minute, this Vulkan emulator gives you much better performance than the OpenGL that we were stuck with on the stock firmware. You can see here, for example, on Midnight Club LA Remix, on the stock software, it was unplayable. With a ton of frame skip, I guess you could say it was playable, but it just looks horrible, and yeah, I don't really consider it 
playable. But here using the Vulkan performance emulator, you can see things are going much better. So I want to show you guys the settings I'm using here. I'm not going to show you everything, of course, just what I find to be most significant, what I find myself messing with the most. So first off, we have our frame skip. Usually when I can, I'll be using auto frame skip, usually having it set to one, sometimes two, but almost always just one. And then going down, something important is skip buffer effects. I'll have this on when I can, but one thing to note is actually when you're using skip buffer effects, it will turn off your frame skip. So from what I understand, you cannot use auto frame skip and skip buffer effects at the same time. So you'll have to mess with that and again, see what works best for you because it's not gonna be the same for every game. And then going down, we have hardware transform. And this one is also important because it really can give you a good performance boost. I believe that there have been some games it has messed up. So if it's not working with it selected, try turning it off, see if that fixes anything. It's not gonna be the same for every game again. So I'm not gonna give you some general recommendation, but these are the three things that I find myself messing with the most. There's definitely more that can be said here, but these are the things that I found to give me the best performance boosts. Another thing that can help is going down to system and then changing the clock speed to 333. Its default is at 111 and it's not perfect. It does make things feel a little weird at times and definitely they're using a lot of hacks here to be able to get good performance. So the harder to run game here like Midnight Club LA Remix, you shouldn't expect a super authentic, accurate PSP experience, but just the fact that you can get a harder to run game like Midnight Club LA Remix here working, it's just so impressive on a $60 handheld, especially compared with what you got on the stock OS. Now here on Crossmix, it's even better. And as you can see here, some parts of the game are better than others. I would still say it's borderline playable, but yeah, obviously not super great. And I do think that this demonstrates a point, even with how impressive Crossmix is on the $55 TrimUI Smart Pro, it's not now even a perfect PSP handheld. I really wish it was, but if you're looking for something that can handle absolutely every PSP game all the time without having to mess with settings here and there on a game by game basis, the TrimUI Smart Pro is still not for you. But I would say the majority of the time the TrimUI Smart Pro, especially now with Crossmix OS, can handle the PSP library. So I just want to make sure you don't think this is perfect for every PSP game and show you that there are some negatives, there are some points in certain games that are not going to be running well. But I picked this game specifically to demonstrate this point because I know it is hard to run. Most PSP games are going to have a much easier time than you would on Midnight Club LA Remix, so this is somewhat of a standout example. You can go to other games like Star Wars Battlefront, ones that were good a lot of the time on Stock OS. If I remember right, on Stock OS, every map didn't give you the best performance, but on Cross Makes, you get good performance on every map I tried, and you can use a 2x resolution a lot of the times and get great performance, full speed, good FPS. So I'm really impressed with this. And of course, the easier to run PSP games are going to be perfectly fine, nothing to worry about whatsoever. And again, in the performance Vulcan emulator, a game that I actually don't like personally, but everyone always uses it as a benchmark, so here it is. Using the 333 clock speed, I'm able to get pretty good performance actually, and I can't say I've tested the whole game or anything, but it appears to be half decent at least. I definitely would call that playable, and again, keep in mind, unlike a $55, $60 handheld. So if you don't own a TrimUI Smart Pro and you're interested in picking one up or at least checking the prices, I'll put a link down below in the description to it. It'll be an affiliate link. It comes at no extra cost to you, but when you buy it through there, it helps support the channel. And also you can check out the AliExpress homepage because frequently they have coupons on the front page so you can save like an extra five bucks or so. So for such a budget handheld, I'm super impressed. And you can even get similar performance boosts in N64 and Dreamcast. So you have new emulators here that you can try out for different games. So you can get a boost here and there on N64 and Dreamcast, but that's not really the focus of my video here. So just know that Crossmix really does help out with things. And I can't stop saying it, I'm super impressed with the TrimUI Smart Pro and maybe even in the future there'll be even better performance. So I'll be watching out for that and maybe I'll do a video showcasing some of the better PSP games on here. Anyway, so if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.